Uh, so, hi, my name's Kabir, and for the past year, my company, PitchMe, has been connecting some of the best journalists in the world with new independent publishers. Now, we know the landscape is changing. Media is getting smaller, and it's becoming harder and harder to make a living as a freelance journalist. But at the same time, there's thousands of new magazines. Howler, Monocle, The Gentlewoman. Your newsstand is full of them. But a lot of the same problems persist. How do you connect journalists, uh, how do you connect people who want to be published with the people who want to publish them? And how do you surface quality? How do you know if anyone's any good? So we built PitchMe, which you can find at pitchme.org. Journalists come on our site, and they pitch their stories. Publishers come and take a look at the stories, like any of these, and they pick the ones that they want. The journalist and the publisher can talk to each other. They can agree a price, set a deadline, manage the edits, deal with expenses, everything. We allow you to take your story from idea to execution. We want to be the Etsy for journalism. Let me just show you quickly how it works. So last year, one of our talented journalists, Pete, who's written for Wired and the Wall Street Journal, came on our site and pitched a story about uh, a trip to Mars. Completely separately, a bunch of guys in Austin, Texas, got together and uh, went on Kickstarter and decided to form a science and futures magazine called The Ascender. They came on our site, they saw Pete's idea, loved it, started talking, and a few months later, it led to this wonderful piece of long-form journalism. A week after that, it was featured on BuzzFeed's list of the best long-form. Now, PitchMe was completely responsible for that process. And we're focused on small publishers like The Ascender. Now, you might think that's crazy, considering what's happening in the magazine world. But actually, in the United States last year, magazine launches outnumbered closures three to one. Uh, also, audiences want them. Crowdfunding has proven to be not only an important source of capital, but also brand awareness and brand distribution. More than $6 million has been pledged towards journalism and periodical projects on Kickstarter. And also, let's not forget that this is an $80 billion industry. So our competitors. Well, there's Odesk and Craigslist, where it's writer versus writer, and it's kind of a race to the bottom where you're never quite sure what you're getting. More directly, you have people like Newsgrid, Percolate, and Contently. Contently is a leader in the space. It raised more than $6 million in its uh, Series B and has more than 30,000 freelancers signed up. But these guys mainly do content marketing. And the best journalists don't want to just do content marketing. They want to do something they really believe in. Our niche is quality. And because we focus on quality, our stories sell for an average of around about $1,000 each which is significantly more than a lot of our competitors. As you can see here, someone, uh, someone's asking for high quality content for around $20, to which we say, good luck with that. How are we gonna make any money? So we'll take a cut of each sale, and we also plan to charge for subscriptions to access our database of journalists. We also plan to charge for pro services, such as having a story edited for you, job boards, offline events. Uh, and we see ourselves as a marketplace for small publishers now because we believe in them and it's a growth market. But we'd like to expand beyond this. We almost see ourselves becoming a network for indie creatives. So think about graphic designers, photographers. Uh, the opportunities are endless. How have we done so far? Well, we've had more than 1,500 invite requests. We're an invite-only site, and we've approved less than a third of it. So we have really talented, top-tier journalists on our site only. And this is around the world. In December, we added video and photography, and January was our best month for sales ever. And we've been completely bootstrapped at this point for the past year. Pretty much, I've been doing this on my own. Who am I? I write for Harper's and The New Yorker's website. Uh, until I came to this fellowship, I was working at the BBC. Um, so I have a, 10 years of experience as a writer and editor. But I also know it as from the point of view of, a, of an indie publisher. I'm the senior editor at a magazine called Port, which is a London-based quarterly which has people like David Remnick and Will Ferrell on our covers, so quite eclectic, and combines design, reportage, and all those good things into one beautiful package. So I understand how this works from a lot of different perspectives. But through it all, what I really want to do is tell stories. And there are more ways than ever to do that now. Um, one of the magazines we have signed up at PitchMe is a Dutch magazine. It's a print publication, uh, which is experimenting with a new form of patronage uh, to avoid having advertisers. But then the last client we had signed up is an app based in San Francisco, which pushes five stories to you every month and then splits the app revenue with the writers. It's paying some of the highest rates in journalism, and you've probably never heard of it. This is an amazing time to be in journalism. All the things I mentioned wouldn't have been possible five years ago. So I'd like you to imagine what journalism could look like in five years' time. And I'd like you to imagine what Pitch Me could look like in five years' time with your help. Thanks very much. I, I think you, uh, you, did a, you did a great job. A couple of quick things. One is when you indicated on that page that $6 million has been raised through Kickstarter. Right. Yeah. To me, that was actually an underwhelming statistic. Mm -hmm. and, and I may interpret it differently than others on the panel, but I think that it caused me to think differently about that page itself. Okay. So that, that'd be one thing. Uh, and then secondly, I was doing some mental math as you talked about your revenue model. And, and if we had more time, and, and this is not that forum, 
but just to let you know, I'd be very interested in digging in much deeper on how exactly you turn this into a big a big idea as opposed to a nice idea. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, would be the next step if we were having a discussion. Absolutely. I, I, uh, um, should I? So I, I, think, um, I think that's absolutely right. I think that this is not necessarily, I don't think I made any qualms that this is not a VC business. This is not like, say, a 10x business. But what it is is possibly like a luxury business, like a Louis Vuitton type business, so the high quality end of a magazine market at the top of that. We take that market. So that's how I view it. And so if I had more time, I'd explain to you some of the revenue numbers to, to back those up, hopefully, and convince you. Do you do anything to vet the quality of the pitches? In other words, is there any responsibility on your part on pitch me? So somebody signs up, they're like, oh, this sounds like an interesting pitch. We're going to spend $2,000. Let's say it never happens. You know, for whatever reason, the pitch sounded good, but there, there's no article there. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Are you I'm are sure. you at all on the hook, or do you vet? Do you do anything on that side? Uh, first of all, all our journalists are vetted, and also the publishers are vetted as well. So everyone in the marketplace is vetted to join the site. The pitches themselves are not vetted, but what happens is, or what's happened until very recently, is that you pay in advance. So what happens is uh, the person's not going to get paid until they deliver the work. So that's the incentive for them to stick around and deal with the edits and manage all that miserable stuff that they have to do. So they're not paid in advance. They're paid on completion? They're, pa they're paid on so completion, they're but we take our money in advance. That way it's, oh, okay. it's sort of like an escrow holding while we wait for them to, to, to deal with the edits and things of that nature. Okay. It's actually built on that question, which is um, I have two <laughs> at risk of being hogging it, two quick ones. Um, one is, because of that focus on quality, how do you, you know, how do you anticipate scaling this? Because it seems like that's a fairly labor-intensive ro role um, for you to play, personally. Um, so it seems like you need some more structure around that. And additionally, I, I thought you did a really good job positioning yourself against competition, and it seems like you're already getting some traction, but I'd learn to learn more about how do people find out about you? How do the journalists, and how do, the, how do you market yourself to the publishers as well? Uh, a, lot of this, uh, a lot of it is very labor intensive, so I've been sort of approaching a lot of the small magazines personally to deal with that. Uh, over the years, I've had designers, and, and or over the year, I've had designers and other people like that help me out, and so they've, they've, um, uh, um, uh, they've, they've sort of expressed it to their friends. Another way is, well, I did a few interviews with a lot of sort of journalism and small magazine sites, so those are kind of exist on Google, and so people find us through that way. Also, it's a, it's a fairly, it, it's, it's a large but still smallish community of magazines, therefore, like, people hear about us, and also the writers kind of to spread the word. Um, your other question, if you remind me, was about... Uh, scaling, the, the quality, betting the quality. Yes, I think this is, uh, over time, I think the, the marketplace needs to start to address itself. So for example, every time a, a, a place is, uh, every time an article is commissioned, the editor reviews that person, maybe on a five-star scale, and those people are surfaced to the top. So it doesn't necessarily have to be us, though we manage the initial stage of the process. I mean, there's, there's a couple of different ways about going about it, and if I had more time, I'd explain them. Kabir, I wanted to ask um, how you d uh, disintermediate yourself out of a job, because as somebody who's pitched a no, lot, I'm once I have a Rolodex, so to speak, or a, you know, a digital platform, I know who I like, why would I come back to you? And, and I'm curious to what extent, um, even with regards to the articles, I, once you, I think that the problem often is that there's too many people pitching, and so how do you sort of, what people really want is to sort of filter out the noise. So once they have 10 people they like, what's the incentive for them to go out and seek new writers? So uh, this, to, the, to your second question, what we do is we have you come on the site and take a look at the stories that you want, so you get to pick them. So and, and if somebody's pitch is stolen, do you have any recourse for that? For the writers, there's a, they cannot see everybody else's pitches. So okay. there's, a, there's a, I think they can see the, the first 100 characters, so they can't uh, steal a picture. This is a plagiarism protection uh, measure that we sort of implemented. Your first question was an issue about... My issue of... of um, I think, why would I need you? It's almost like a dating service. Once I essentially have all the you know, girlfriends and boyfriends I want, yeah. why would I come back to you as a publisher? Well, I think this is more like Tinder, multiple partners kind of thing. Um, <laughs> our, our idea is that um, if, if you get good, well, generally what's happened is everyone who's come uh, to the site has come back. Right. So essentially, if you want one writer, you want multiple writers, right? Like you want more people. So you have issue two, issue three, issue four to fill. It doesn't have to be the same person over and over. It doesn't, you don't necessarily want Pete back again every single issue. So there's that, that incentive to come back to find other people there. And uh, if you sort of try and go around the platform, you, um, uh, you, you, you uh, lose that incentive to come back and find this pool of vetted talent. So that's kind of our major sort of, it's mainly about positive incentives to keep coming back as opposed to negative incentives to stay people away, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, there were a couple of things that were compelling on their own, but they seem to be counterintuitive when you reconcile them with one another. One, you're, you're approaching brand new publishers. Two, you're saying they're paying highest prices relative to the market. And three, if they're brand new, like, 
they're somewhat unproven. Like, how do we know they're even going to be customers six, nine, 18 months down the road? Can you talk to that with your experience with either Port or what you're seeing in the marketplace? Uh, Port is now, I think, on its, um, I think uh, we're approaching our third year, we're uh, into two years, and we had to actually figure out a new font on the side because we never expected to make it <coughs> 10 issues. So we had like the number nine, and then we had to lower the font for 10. So I, I do appreciate that a lot of um, uh, magazines don't necessarily last, but a lot of the magazines I mentioned, for example, Howler keeps going, Monocle is, is, is a stalwart of the industry. There's a lot of magazines that are sticking around. Uh, the, the Kickstarter issue as well is that because they get this sort of bump in funding at the, in the first stage, they're sticking around for much longer, right? Their audience is with them and is following them all the way through, for example, Matter or Noah's narratively. And at the outset, I mean, isn't it Im implicit that if you're starting a new content publication that you sort of have a stable of writers and a sort of vision for your at least your first few issues? No, I think actually it tends to be the opposite. It tends to be like a labor of love. So what happens is people start, are, are starting a magazine to, to do the stuff that they love. We're focused on the narrative side of the equation, which means that you can't fill an issue uh, or any of the magazines we talked about with just one or two people over and over again. So what they do find is they need writers. They go on Google AdWords and they find us. Then they come to us and they look and see the quality of work and they, and they commission us. That's, that's kind of been the process that we've seen.